So, today we will discuss few problems on continuity, differentiability and application of the derivatives like a mean value theorem, monotonically increasing and decreasing functions. So, but prior to start with the problems, uh, we will take up the topic which we have not covered in the last lecture that is the Taylor's theorem. So, before that we first complete that proof of the Taylor's theorem and a statement we have already discussed, but still we uh, rewrite again. Um, this Taylor's theorem is also known as the generalized mean value theorem and this says if a function f if a function f and its derivative up to say order order n plus 1 or up to n minus 1 are continuous up to order n minus 1 are continuous um, up to say order n let us be take up to order n plus 1 is all continuous and and uh, continuous over the close interval over the close interval say a to a plus h ok this close interval a b and differentiable and its derivative and its n -th derivative and its n -th derivative that is f n f n x. So, here f n x and a derivative exist and a derivative exist in the open interval a to a plus h then there exist at least one number one number theta lying between 0 and 1 lying between 0 and 1 such that such that uh, the expansion of this function at the point a plus h is can be written in the form of a series f a plus h a prime a plus h square over factorial to f double dash a plus h n minus 1 uh, over factorial n minus 1 f of n minus 1 a plus plus h n uh, over factorial n factorial n f n a plus theta h a plus theta h this expression. So, a function f can be expanded in the power of h in the power of h in this form and the last term is called the remainder basically it is called the Lagrange's form of the remainder this is called the Lagrange's form of the remainder. There are various form we are not interested in the other just log. Now, here <laughs> uh, last time we have also in the last lecture we have taken in a similar statement because it coincides with the previous. Uh, if I choose another form or we can say of this statement is if suppose I take f a plus h and let x be a point be a point of the interval a to a plus h ok a to h and let f satisfies f satisfy the condition conditions of Taylor's theorem at 
as defined above. As defined above, uh, in the interval a to a plus h, a to a plus h, okay. So that it satisfies the condition for a to x also, okay. Then, then if I take a plus x, then the equation one can be rewritten in this form. Then equation one. can be written as uh, f of x equal to f a plus x minus a f prime a plus x minus a whole square over factorial 2 f double dash a um, plus so on up to say x minus a to the power n minus 1 factor n minus 1 f n minus a n minus 1 derivative at the point a plus the remainder term r n x where r n x is h x minus a to the power n divided by factorial n n a derivative at a point a plus theta x minus a we are the theta line between 0 and 1. Then one can be written uh, in the form in the form this where h is taken to be uh, h x uh, x minus a. So, if in this form if I take h to be x minus a then the function is well defined, function is throughout continuous, its derivative up to order n minus 1 is continuous over the closed interval a b and f n plus 1 f n exists, it means they are also differentiable over the open interval a b. When we say f n exists, means the derivative up to order n exists in the open interval a to a plus h and they are also continuous over the closed interval a to a plus h then what he says is if we picked up any point in the interval a b. So, I am taking the point like a corner point x plus h. In fact, this will be a b interval where I choose a point x in between a b and that point is a plus h. Then expansion of the function f x in the powers of x minus a ascending powers of x minus a can be expressed in this form where the first n terms is the series and the last term the n -th plus 1 -th term that is equal to n a term is the remainder term and which called the Lagrange's form of the remainder. And this point is obviously a point clearly the point a plus theta x minus a since theta lying between 0 and 1. So, obviously this point belongs to the interval a to x a to x because it cannot be a because theta is not 0 it cannot be x as theta is not 1. Okay, so, it lies in between this. So, there is some point in between the interval where the remainder term can be expressed. Okay. The proof of this which we have not done it last time let us see the proof. Uh, its proof is uh, simple in fact we what we do is we construct a function such a that so that we can uh, apply the Rose theorem and once you apply the Rose theorem a point c can be obtained where the derivative becomes 0 and from here the remainder term will come. Okay, so, that is the our idea of the proof. So, let us consider the function phi x h f x plus uh, a uh, consider function phi f x plus a plus h minus x a prime x plus a plus x minus x whole square y factorial 2 f double dash x and so on plus a plus h minus x to the power n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 f n minus 1 x plus a a plus h minus x power n. Where a is a constant 
where a is a constant constant to be determined such that the value at the end point of phi that is phi a is equal to phi a plus h. We put the restriction on phi in such a way so that a can be computed. So, suppose I uh, put this restriction and then from here let it be 2 <coughs> in the 2 <coughs> if I replace x equal to a and x equal to a plus h <coughs> but we get as soon as you substitute x equal to a plus h all the terms gets cancelled except you are getting f a plus h. So, we get f of a plus h and when you take x equal to a then what you get in the right hand side we get f a plus h f prime a plus h square by factorial 2 f double dash a and so on h to the power n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 f n minus 1 a plus a into h to the power n. Okay. So, this function now the function phi is a continuous function since the function phi is continuous over the interval a to a plus h and differentiable in the open interval a to a plus h and also satisfy the condition phi of a equal to phi of a plus h. Why? If you look the function phi, the function phi is basically uh, is a linear expression uh, is an expression which involves the function f x and the term a like l minus x or l minus x square and so on. So, instead of the one x to the power n and the derivative since function f x n is derivative of two orders a n minus 1 they are continuous and this x to the power n type uh, a alpha x plus beta x um, to the power n type they are continuous function. So, product of each term will be continuous. So, phi will be continuous. Similarly, phi is also differentiable and at the end point of the interval a, a and a plus a it attains the value same value. So, we can apply the Rolle's theorem. So, by Rolle's theorem there exists a point c. So, there exists a sum theta there exists theta lying between 0 and 1 such that the derivative of the function at some point a plus theta h is 0. So, a plus theta is a point lying between a to a plus h. Okay. But, what is the phi prime x? What phi prime x if we just go and differentiate it, you will get many terms get cancelled and only you are getting differentiation of this one term when it is derivative here and this and rest is telegraphically uh, it gets cancelled. So, we get finally, the value is a plus x minus x a plus h minus x to the power n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 f n x minus p uh, in minus n a a plus h minus x to the power n minus 1. This you get. Now, this quantity at x equal to a plus theta h the phi dash of this number is 0. So, from here what we get? We get h to the power n minus 1 1 minus theta n minus 1 over factorial n minus 1 just substitute this value x equal to this number uh, into f n a plus theta h minus p uh, n a 1 minus theta n minus 1 h to the power n minus 1. So, if it solve it we get the value of a will come out to be uh, the thing uh, that is uh, 1 by factorial n 1 by factorial n f n a plus a plus theta h a plus theta h we are the theta lying between 0 and 1 and 1 minus theta is not equal to 0 and h is not equal to 0 and h is also not equal to 0. Okay? So, we get the remainder a 
and then substituted this value in 1. So, put in in 2 we get the result proof with the remainder term. Okay. Now, as a particular case we can say when a is equal to 0 when a equal to 0 then the Taylor series Taylor's expansion or Taylor's theorem reduces to reduces um, reduce reduced to reduces to the uh, expression which is f x equal to f 0 plus x f prime 0 plus x square over factorial to f double dash 0 and so on x to the power n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 f n minus 1 0 plus the remainder term that is x to the power n over factorial n f n theta x and this form is known as the McLaurin's theorem McLaurin's theorem okay this we get this now further if our if the remainder term that is R n R n which is basically equal to uh, h to the power n or x minus a to the power n over factorial n x to the power n over factorial n f n uh, a plus theta x minus a a plus theta x minus a if this remainder term goes to 0 as n tends to infinity then Taylor's theorem gives the Taylor expansion of the function f x of the function f x at the point x at x at the point x or around the point 0 around the point 0 of course around the point 0 at 0 Taylor expansion no no at, at the point a x minus a, a at the point a around the point a around a in the power of x minus a. and the McLaurin's theorem give the corresponding McLaurin expansion of the function around the point 0 that is what you get it ok. So, for example, suppose I take the function f x equal to e to the power x write down the McLaurin's expansion of this function McLaurin's expansion. So, what is our derivative if I differentiate n times of this is nothing but the e to the power x itself. So, this is true for every x belongs to r. So, when you take the 0 it is 1 that is use the now McLaurin's expansion the McLaurin's series expansion let it be 3. So, when you use the 3, so use 3 you will get the expansion is 1 plus x plus x square by factorial 2 and so on x to the power n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 and then you will get the remainder term and the remainder term will be what x to the power n over factorial n e to the power theta x where the theta lying between 0 and 1. Okay. But if the remainder term goes to 0 then we get the McLaurin series or expansion of the function e to the power x. So, here the remainder term is x to the power n over factor n e to the power theta x. Now, if you look the e to the power theta x. Now, e to the power theta x if I take this since e to the power theta x the value of this if it is uh, theta uh, uh, x is positive then the value will be that value is less than e to the power x if theta is positive sorry if x is positive because if x is positive and theta lying between 0 and 1. So, e to the power x the e to the power theta x will be less than 
e to the power x and when x is negative when x is negative then it is coming below so it is dominated by one always if this it means the e to the power theta x will always be a bounded function by e to the power x okay so it is bound and and x to the power n by factorial n limit of this as n tends to infinity will be zero why it is zero because the reason is when it for x is fixed for fixed x we can identify there exists an n such that mod of x is less than capital n so we can find x to the power n factorial n as x over 1 x over 2 say x over n and then you are getting x over n plus 1 up to x over n. So, what happened? These are the finite values and this value. So, some alpha into x over say this number every term will be less than n. So, we can write x by n raised to the power n minus n minus 1. So, this is less than 1 mod of this. So, this will be tending to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, this will go to 0. So, therefore, the remainder term in this will go to 0. So, expansion of x to the power x will be 1 plus x plus x square factorial 2 plus x to the power n factorial and so on. And this will give the Macrolens series for this. This is the Macrolens series for the function f x for the function f x which is e to the power x. Okay? Similarly, if we take the right down the write down the Maclaurin's expansion of the function f x equal to say sin x. Okay. Now, we know the derivative of the sin x, the nth derivative of sin x is uh, comes out to be sin x plus n pi by 2 and this is true for every x belongs to R. Okay. So, take the x is 0. So, what you are getting is sin n pi by 2. Now, when it is n pi by 2, it depends on n. Okay. So, for n is even, when you are taking this becomes pi for 2 pi etcetera. So, we are getting the sin x, is it not? And then uh, the um, x plus uh, theta. So, this uh, the value of this will be 0 and well n are the odd numbers the value will be sometimes plus 1 or minus 1. So, if you use the 3 we get the expansion sin x as x minus x cube by factorial 3 plus x 5 by factorial 5 and so on like this. And what is the remainder term r n x the remainder term r n will be x to the power n y factorial n sin of theta x plus n pi by 2 this is the remainder. So, mod of remainder mod of this, but this limit and where remainder term is this which is dominated by mod x to the power n by factorial n less than or equal to this because this is always less than or equal to 1. So, as n tends to infinity this will go to 0 as n. So, again we can expand it and get the series expansion for the function. So, that is what is get. Okay. So, this is all about uh, the previous thing. Now, let us take the few problems <laughs> on continuity and then. So, let us take first the problem uh, say exercise. Uh, so, that the function so that the function f x which is a sin 1 by x so that the function sign one way is continuous is continuous uh, in the uh, is continuous in the interval 0 less than x less than equal to 1 a semi closed interval but not not uniformly continuous this is our problem okay so, so that this function is continuous, but now since this uh, at the point 0 the function is not defined. So, we have to remove the 0 from here. Okay? So, let us see the solution. 
Now, for the continuity for a given f sin l greater than 0, we are interested to find delta. So, for a given f sin l greater than 0, there exists a delta such that mod of f x minus uh, say any number, suppose I take alpha mod of f x minus f alpha is less than f sin l whenever mod of x minus alpha is less than delta. Okay. So, we can find out this where delta is alpha and del both are the point alpha and x belongs to the interval 0 to 1 is it not. So, there exists some delta we have to identify delta. Okay. So, what is this consider <coughs> mod f x minus f alpha this is equal to mod sin 1 by x minus sin 1 by alpha. Now, sin c minus sin d is twice cos c plus d by 2. So, when you take the c plus d by 2, the value will come out x plus alpha over 2 x alpha and into sin d minus c by 2. So, you are getting x minus alpha over 2 x alpha this thing. Okay. Now, this entire thing cos of this is less than equal to 1 and this one is dominated by sin x mod of sin x is less than equal to mod x. So, this is less than equal to 2 times mod x minus alpha over 2 mod x alpha is it not 2 gets cancelled basically. So, basically you are getting this one. Now, we have to find the delta. So, let us choose the delta as the minimum of minimum of alpha by 2 and alpha square by 2 epsilon we will see why it is done. Okay. The reason we come to know why we have taken this. So, when delta is equal to alpha y 2, when delta is suppose alpha y 2, okay, we are choosing delta to be say alpha y 2, then in that case, then mod x minus alpha should be less than delta alpha y 2. So, this implies that x lies between 3 by 2 alpha and alpha y 2. So, when x lies between this and alpha we are choosing taking positive of course. So, the 1 by x alpha mod of this basically is what 1 by x is less than uh, when you are taking. So, 2 by alpha is greater than 1 by x it means 1 by x is less than 2 by alpha. So, this is less than 2 by alpha square. Okay. So, from here this is 1. So, from 1 if I put it this uh, thing then mod of f x minus f alpha is less than equal to 2 by alpha square mod x minus alpha, but mod x minus alpha I am choosing to be delta is it not. So, if delta which is less than f sin l if delta is equal to alpha square by 2 alpha square by 2 into f sin l because as soon as delta is this this is less than delta. So, replace this by this. So, alpha square by 2 get cancelled and this is less than because mod x minus alpha I am taking delta and delta is alpha square by 2 f sin l. Okay, here. So, for this delta for this delta we get, but delta is also chosen here. So, take the minimum value of. So, that is why I have taken the delta to be minimum value of this where both the conditions are satisfied and we get this. So, what we get? if we take picked up a point x and alpha in the interval which is satisfying this condition this is the minimum of uh, say uh, alpha y 2 minimum of this then obviously this function becomes continuous so this shows the function fx which is sin 1 by x is continuous over the interval 0 less than but it is not uniformly continuous, but it is not uniformly continuous. Why? It means uniform continuous means delta should not depend on a, on the point here the delta is depending on the point alpha. So, we have to identify a delta which is independent, but we are unable to get it that is why we say this. Is a, so, how this is not possible to get the delta independent of alpha. So, let us see why. Suppose I take picked up the point say x edge 1 by uh, n uh, 2 over 
n pi and alpha to be say 2 uh, over x is this 2 over 3 n pi. Now, both are the point belonging to the interval 0 to 1 is it not? So, pi is more than 3 and n becomes large. So, it can be less than 1 and we get and for this what is the sin 1 by x minus sin 1 by alpha. If I look this thing this is equal to sin n pi by 2 minus sin 3 n pi by 2. So, when you choose the values n is given the value will come out to be 2 okay? because for n is equal to 1 the sin pi by 2 is 1, but sin 3 pi by 2 this is the function sin sin 0 sin 1 sin pi 3 by. So, this is 1 and this is minus 1 in fact, this is minus 1. So, when this take we are getting adding and we get the value 2, but mod of x minus alpha this is equal to what 2 over n pi minus 2 over 3 n pi 3 n pi this will be equal to say 4 over 3 n pi. Now, n is sufficient for all position. So, this can be made less than as small as we please for sufficiently large n where delta is very small quantity less than 1. So, we can choose the n so large so that the, and but this is not true it means this shows the function f x which is sin 1 by x is not uniformly continuous. We got the point to point when you take a different point this difference is not made less than f sin r though the point is less lying between this neighborhood. So, this shows the function is not uniformly continuous. So, this is one of the example we said. Second example let us take. So, that the function f x which is get us integers x plus half sin inverse 1 by x divide by x. This function when x is not equal to 0 and the value at the point 0 is 0 has discontinuity discontinuity of second kind of second kind on the right hand side on the right of 0 on the right of 0 origin and has discontinuity of the first kind on the left of origin this we wanted to it means the discontinuity of the second kind on the right means the limit of this thing limit of this does not exist and the left hand side when it is discontinuity of the first kind limit exist, but they are left hand and right and the limits are different in fact, they are uh, limits uh, sorry when it is of second kind then the limit of this uh, does not exist, but here the limit will come out to be something like when infinity or plus infinity bit dif differs from the value at the point 0. So, let us take the solution. The function phi x if we take picked up the function say phi x let phi x is this plus half sin inverse 1 by x. Okay. Let us take only this function where what is the mod x? Mod x is the greatest integer function get as integer function. So, mod x is uh, this sorry where this box x is the greatest integer function means that is the value of this x uh, when lies between n to n plus 1 the value of this x is equal to n and so on. Okay? So, that is one. So, if we look the interval 0. So, suppose I take the right hand side the right hand side interval that is 0 to h. Now, in this interval the integral 
here the x box will give the value 0 because all the value x which are greater than equal to 0 but less than 1 h is obviously strictly less than 1. So, in this interval the x box will give the value 0 and sin inverse of 1 by x sorry this is sin of uh, inverse yes sin inverse 1 by x not sin inverse that is simply sin x I am sorry this is problem which I have taken is uh, sin of 1 by x yes it is sin 1 by x only not then take it sin inverse is just only 1 by x ok 1 by x only. So, it is 1 by x. Now, when you take the sin 1 by x then this function does not have a limit at x tends to 0 from positive side because it fluctuates so from it will fluctuate it will oscillate oscillate in between in between minus half to plus half if it is half function minus half to plus half ok. So, the function f x which is phi x over x will oscillate will oscillate between minus infinity to plus infinity it means the limit will not exist. So, f is discontinuity of second kind ok when the limit does not exist at all um, minus infinity to plus while on the left hand side what happen the left hand side if I take minus h 0 suppose I take this interval then here x this becomes minus 1 <coughs> ok. So, the phi function will oscillate in between oscillate in between minus half to minus 3 by 2. Therefore, f x which is equal to phi x by x will oscillate from minus infinity <coughs> as x tends to 0 is it not because x tends to 0 it will go to in uh, minus to my plus infinity because x is also negative when x tends to 0 from negative side. So, it will go to plus infinity. So, here in this case the right here limit of the function f x when x tends to 0 exists and equal to infinity. So, it is a discontinuity which differs from the value at the point 0. So, it is a discontinuity of first kind ok. So, that is what is. Now, let us take a few more examples on the uh, say I ask this question discuss the continuity of the function f x which is limit as n tends to infinity log of 2 plus x minus x to the power 2 n sin x divide by 1 plus x to the power 2 n in the interval in the interval 0 less than equal to x less than equal to pi by 2 ok. Discuss the continuity of the function at the point x equal to 1 ok. <coughs> now, let us take the let limit of this function f x when x tends to 1 minus what happens this is the same as limit of the function 1 minus s when s tends to 0. So, this is the same as limit s tends to 0 function means limit as n tends to infinity log of 2 plus 1 minus h minus 1 minus s to the power 2 n sin 1 minus h divided by 1 plus 1 minus s power 2 n ok. Now, you look when a n tends to infinity the 1 minus h to the power 2 n as n tends to infinity 
will go to 1, 0. Because it is less than 1 and power is keeps on increasing. So, it is tending to 0. So, this part is 0, this part is 0 and this limit will come out to log 3. So, basically this limit will be log of 3. Okay. Now, when you take the limit of the function f x, when x to 1 plus, then this is the same as limit s tends to 0 f of 1 plus h, which is limit s tends to 0, limit n tends to infinity log of 2 plus 1 plus h minus 1 plus h power 2 n into sin 1 plus h divided by 1 plus 1 plus h power 2 n. So, if we look that limit, now you see when h n tends to infinity, then what happens to this? This part goes to 0. So, this is the limit since limit of this as n tends to infinity log of log of 3 plus h divided by 1 plus 1 plus h power 2 n this will be 0 because this part is greater than 1. So, it will go to 0. So, this part is 0 and what is the limit of this 1 plus h 2 n over 1 plus 1 plus h 2 n when n tends to infinity is 1. Because if I divide by this 1 plus h then basically this comes out to 1. So, this limit is 1 and when n is tending so it is basically the limit of this. So, limit of f x when x tends to 1 plus is nothing but the minus sign 1. So, limit does not exist left hand limit and the right hand limit comes out to be different. So, so f is not continuous at x equal to 1 and in fact, the functional value at the point 1 if you take f of 1 the f of 1 comes out to be what half log 3 minus sin 1. So, that is also differs from here. So, okay. So, that part is good. Then let us come to some problems on the differentiability or mm, let us see. Suppose I take the function uh, uh, f x, if f x, if phi x equal to say f x plus f 1 minus x and the second derivative of the function phi prime is negative, negative in the interval 0 less than x less than equal to x less than equal to 1 then so that, so that phi is an increasing function phi increases, increases of phi x increases in the interval 0 less than equal to x less than equal to half and decreases in the interval half less than equal to x less than equal to 1. Hence, a tense maximum at x equal to half. Okay. Let me see this. What is given is that function f is well defined function over the interval 0 and 1 and second derivative is negative. So, function is giving to be function f is continuous differentiable and the second derivative exists, which is less negative in the interval 0 less than x less than equal to 1. So, this much information is known. Now, let us consider the phi days x. Phi days x, if we take the phi days, this is the f prime x and the derivative of this is f prime 1 minus x and derivative of minus x is minus 1. But we cannot get any information whether f prime is greater than this or not. Okay. So, go for the another one phi double days x. So, phi double days x comes out to be f double days x and this comes out to plus f 1 mi double days minus. Now, from here we claim we claim that phi double days x is negative for x negative 
uh, why it is negative for x belonging to the interval say yes. Now, here we say here this is uh, okay, uh, why uh, f double dash x is negative in the interval this when x varies from 0 to 1. So, since our f double dash x is negative for all x belonging to the interval 0 1 close interval. So, f double dash 1 minus x will also be negative why because when x is from uh, for every x because this is when x varies from 0 to 1 then 1 minus x will vary from 1 to 0. So, they always lies in the interval 0 1 and for all point which lies in the 0 1 the second derivative is negative. So, phi double dash is negative for all x in the interval 0 1. Okay? So, this is information we have got it. Achha, now, uh, we can come now x varies. Okay. Uh, so, what we get is the phi dash x. So, our once so phi double dash x is negative is negative. Therefore, phi dash x will be a decreasing function monotonically decreasing function monotonically decreasing function. So, once it decreasing over the interval 0 to 1. Okay. Now, let us me see what is that mono, uh, decreasing function. So, the value of the function at the point 0. So, what is the value of the function at the point 0? The value of the function at the point 0 is f 0 minus f prime 1. The value of the function at a point half uh, phi dash a at the point half is nothing but what? Phi dash half this becomes what? When you take f prime 1 this is 0 f prime half minus f prime half which is 0 and then value of the phi days at the point at the point say 1 what is this a f prime 1 minus f prime 0. So, what is this this is the function phi days phi days is this function which attains the value uh, sorry this is 1 interval this is half. So, phi days attains the value 0 at this point and then these values at the point 0 is this value at the point 1 this value. Now, phi days and phi days a they are differing by minus sign only because minus times of this number is the second. So, if it has a positive value here this will have a negative value here and if it is negative value then this has a positive value, but phi days is a decreasing function. So, phi days is decreasing means it cannot go from negative to positive. So, what we uh, get it, get it that since it is monotonically decreasing. So, we can uh, we can consider from here it that in between 0 to 1 phi dash must be positive. So, here it should be positive here it should be negative and the, so that it decreases and cross the x axis and going down. So, this shows this shows this shows that the function phi dash x is negative for x belonging to the interval 0 to half and positive for all x belonging to the half and 1. It means this implies the function phi what is the function therefore, our function phi is a phi function is decreasing in the interval 0 to half and increasing no no it is wrong it is other way around sorry it is other way around this is positive this is greater than 0 in this interval and this is less than 0. In, so, this is increasing function in the interval positive. So, it is increasing uh -huh, this is what it is coming no 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 it is uh, I am sorry what is this is this function phi dash if it is 
positive it is increasing oh yes and then it is decreasing so function will be something like this and then at the sorry at the point half it is coming to be at the point half what is this is uh, yes yes at the point half so it is decreases is it not so it will go like this so maximum value will come at the point half yes so we get this yeah. so this is our increasing in this and decreasing in the interval half to 1 so our function f phi phi which is this function phi this function fx so what we get is the phi x increase in this decrease in this and attains the maximum value at x equal to phi so phi uh, at x equal to half it will attain its maximum value is it not because then only we are getting the function phi dash is this 0 and this one is 1. So, here it is f dash 0 and then f dash 0 is greater than this f dash 0 is greater than this and this is negative that is why it is coming. So, it is coming to be this like that. Okay. So, we get this one uh, the value at the point this is basically right. Uh, at the point x equal to half this function is this. So, what we get is and that uh, increases in the interval. So, function phi is increasing in the interval this phi dash x is greater than 0 and this is less than 0. Okay. So, we get this one and the phi dash x. Okay. So, this shows our result is coming. Okay. So, that complete the result. Why something is wrong? 